Hello and welcome to that Double D team. It's your boy Digger and this is my top 10 comic book films of all time. No kind of order, but I'm going to put them in the order, I guess, just to give it out to you. But these are all equally dope to me and I thought you guys should get to experience this. As you know, my boy D and JD, they're doing their videos too, but you obviously know this is the best one, so <clears throat> shut your mouth. <laughs> We're gonna get into this. Number ten, I went with Captain America Two, The Winter Soldier, for many reasons. Um, I think the Cap, the, the um, the Cap um one is a dope origin one, and it shows everything. But he froze, and he brought him back, and he had to beef with um, Winter Soldier. He finds out it's his best friend from back in the day, Bucky Barnes. Like, and for a guy to be named Bucky, I think that's pretty gangster anyway. But um, yeah, it was dope. It was dope. Um. You can't really fuck a Winter Soldier, man. At all. At all. He had the mask on, and he was just looking. And find and you and you find out later on that Winter Soldier killed Tony's parents. What? How gangster are you? Put a bullet through Black Widow. What? Bow. Hold that one. But yeah, <laughs> that was that was dope. Um, very big movie that one. Um, on your left. You know, on your left. You just stop it. But um, yeah, <laughs> that was dope. That was my number 10, Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier. My number 9, uh, Avengers 3, Infinity War. Man. I like it for the simple fact that you had the you had all of them, not all of them, but the majority of all the Marvel characters in one movie. They weren't all together because I thought it would have been dope if Cap and Iron Man linked up after the beef. But Thanos, uh, his children, the death of Gamora, spoiler alert. Um, Spider-Man's new suit, Iron Man stepping up with the technology. I like his suit, man. The fucking nano, the nano suit. Like he had no, he had an arm in a suit, and he made the suit reappear from off his foot to block the shit. The arm, oh, the shit was so dope. I was like, you know what? Tony stepped his game up on that one. Playing Spider for uh, Spider-Man as well. With yeah, that was suit. it. Yeah, Spider-Man's new suit. That was dope. You know the new car smell. Um. <laughs> The death of Vision. Twice. Twice. You know, it was so good. He had to bring it. Had to bring it back. You know, that was dope. Um, Kill twice and stop twice, man. You know, the disrespect. How they couldn't. See, how they couldn't find Falcon after he disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> like no one knew where he was. He was like, I, I Sam. Like, you, <laughs> you know, it was just like that was bad, man. That was bad. Um, it showed um, Scarlet Witch. Showed how strong she was. Like, you know, she loves the boy, so she gonna protect him. And after Vision, after Vision got jumped like the first twenty minutes in the movie, he was like, Scarlet just back off, ah, ah. and you know, Black Widow, she had a little new hairdo, wasn't feeling it, but you know, it's cool, it's whatever. But um, yeah, overall, that was a really dope movie. If I'm gonna watch it again when I get home, yeah, that's number um, number eight, nine, Avengers three, Infinity War, my number eight. Thor 3, Ragnarok, basically continues, well, it's just before Avengers, and um, I'm not a big Thor fan, but after watching Thor 3, I became a Thor fan. Um, He's a badass, he doesn't need his, his, he doesn't need Milner, he has, what's the other one called? Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker, oh, I call him Oathbreaker. He has Stormbreaker, the um the big axe, and um, it's actually held together with um, Groot's arm. Or a piece, a piece of group, which is the strongest wood in the world. It's like vibranium wood. Pause. <laughs> like, it's so gangster. Like that was dope. It was a big story line with with um. Uh, Thor, you know, finding himself basically. Cause, you know, got a new haircut from um the one Stanley R.I.P. Um, yeah, man, it was it was big. I I'm not, I don't like Thor, so after I watched that, I was thinking like, yo, he's actually. Pretty good. It's a lot of camera, and they brought Hulk into it. What? They, they actually merged Hulk World. Was it? Was it Hulk World? Planet, Planet, Planet Hulk. Hulk. Same shit. With Thor and got Ragnarok. And that was so dope. And Hela, she's a badass, and she just grows dreads and throws them bitches. Just, it's crazy. It's crazy. And they destroyed um, Thor's home. 
What's that place called? Asgard. Asgard. Well, Sir Tyrannic really popped up at the end. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a big battle at the end. Um, the death of 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 Thor's dad for the second time, I guess, or no? Well, they thought he was dead. I was feels that man. Yeah, it was emotional that part. That part kind of got emotional. He but... called uh, Loki his son in it. Yeah, and Loki just recognized like recognized him as his son and not his outsider. And Loki. Infinity War, he's like Odin's son. Yeah. And that's where all that Rather shit spilled into Infinity War, which made Infinity War so dope because Ragnarok was so goddamn dope and it just bled into the next flick. So, but Shout yeah. Shout out to Taika for that, bro, because he was the new producer in it on that in the film. Oh, yeah, he, he came in. He played Korg. Played Korg, and he brought like a little comedy yeah. element to it, a little New Zealand accent, and I think he's dead. Mm-hmm. No, he's still alive. He's all right, yeah. You know? Sorry, what were you saying? You're yeah. like, yeah, the foundation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have a lot of foundation. You guys are good. Oh, no. Not now. Yeah. But yeah, he was he, he was pretty joke. Pretty joke. But um what's the girl's name? The um the fucking the flying Valkyrie. The Valkyrie. Tessa. She is so sexy. Creed. So sexy. That's what she is. Yeah, I haven't seen that um that new shit she's in with the Keith Stanfield dude. But yeah, she's sexy. Anyway, yeah, she plays Valkyrie. She's like a uh, Asgard people, but soldiers. You know, all women tribes. Kind of like some Wakanda shit. You think about it. Take note. <laughs> but yeah. Number eight. A store three. Ragnarok. We'll move really quick on this one. Number seven. X-Men. First class. Now. I was big X- I'm a big X-Men fan. From young. Growing up. And I like this one because. It's the first class. It shows basically how they all started. Um, the originals. The OGs as you call it. Um. Wolverine wasn't a part of it, but he could have been, but he told him to fuck off. <laughs> you know, that was a dope cameo, which made him actually star in every X-Men movie because even that little cameo there. Yeah, that was dope. But um, yeah, it was really, really, really good. It shows um how, well, we kind of seen how Magneto's story started from the first X-Men back in like the late 90s, or the early 2000s. But this one, it showed him from a, from a child and the guy was fucking with it. What's that? The, um... Kevin Bacon's character was fucking with him. I actually did some research on that character too. Hellfire Club. Yeah. He's badass. Pretty, yeah, he's a badass. He like takes energy and it's like um fucking with um that Black Panther suit. He takes the power in and just just starts the same power that my guy had. But Yo, you like the Hellfire Club in this type of versus X Men. Yeah. Gifted. Okay. See, that's another show to look out for y'all. Gifted. The gifted. Gifted? The gifted. The gifted, be smart. Um, yeah, it, it was like a show on Beast before, like he got the blue. How he got the blue, you know? You know, it showed him as just Hank McCoy. You know, it was really dope, really dope. But, um, that's my number seven, X Men First Class. Moving on, number six, Logan, which I think is probably the best out of all the Wolverine movies. Easily, easily. The second one was. I'm not gonna cuss him. I didn't enjoy the second one. It was good till the old guy got in the massive um, metal machine. Why would you do it? The ending. Hyped. Like. Yeah, the suit. I thought he was gonna rock the suit, but we never see. So hopefully they can bring it back in somehow. I'm assuming he wore that suit for the years that we don't know that we Logan. Don't, for, from before Logan, so, so I hope I hope they can. That's his incident and then. But yeah, going back to Logan, Logan's dope. It takes place years after everything. All the X-Men are dead. All, every last one of them. And Wolverine, he's old and beat down. And he can't even pull his claws out. And when he does, his hands are bleeding. He's like, he has arthritis in his knuckles. Yeah, I felt sad for him. But at the same time, he has a daughter. And it's she's like, yeah, she's like Wolverine on, on the 12 years old and speaks Spanish yeah, and she's original, dope OG, yeah and he dies so you know R.I.P well that's a fake R.I.P because he ain't really dead but yeah the death of Wolverine basically so that time you know just as he dies and uh, says goodbye Marvel are like yeah we'll buy that franchise off you <laughs> kill them all but if they do that though they can kind of bring back they can fill in the gaps different universe I'll just restart the whole thing. Hold on, wait, wait, what? What do you mean? No one in the X Men universe will show up in Marvel. 
because that's because that's a different universe, and they have to recast everyone to introduce him again as an origin. So you can't have you can't have um Jackman. Jackman won't come back. Right? The only person that'll keep the role is Deadpool. Wow, shit! I could play Hugh Jackman's fucking role as Wolverine. <clears throat> Fuck all that. Anyway, but um, yeah, Logan was dope. It shows a um. It just shows a, a I want to say a fragile Wolverine, man. Broken. A broken Wolverine. Like, he couldn't do too much. But you see him do as much as he could do. Except show for. <laughs> yeah, he had a nice fucking, nice whip to show for motherfuckers around. And that was his bread and butter. You know? I didn't actually see that coming. I want to know what happened to um, Sabretooth, though. He doesn't he have, like, the same kind of, like, not... He has the regenerating power. Yeah. So what, you think he would have? Then what he'd been doing in the in the corn or the fields, he'd been putting stuff in it to make you anti mutant. That's why not, there was no more mutants in that amount of years because of right. the water and stuff like that, and why right, Logan right. was struggling to regenerate. Cause right, he was, he was it's killing it. him off. Right, okay, slowly. See, that's right. There's dope. I'm glad you got a little insight from my boy D over there, smart motherfucker. <laughs> but yeah, that's my number six, Logan. Number five. Deadpool 1. I could have picked Deadpool 2 in there, it being newer and all that, but Deadpool 1 kind of set the stage for a lot of comic book movies. Like, if, it, if you're going to have yourself with a, if you're going to even attempt to be R-rated, you have to, you have to come correct, and Logan did. That's why Logan's in there. But Deadpool, he set it off. He set it off. He set that motherfucker off. I mean, I, Valentine's Day when it dropped. I took my girls to the cinema to go see that. We sitting there. I'm like, yo, superhero movie. First five minutes. Oh, my God. He even says it. It's like, I thought it was a superhero movie. Like, the shit was crazy. It's basically everything from the comic books. They just brought it. I felt like they actually made the role. They built the character around Ryan Reynolds. Or when he first read the comic book, he built his his life around Deadpool type, type shit. I don't know. Okay, this it's so much alike. Even when he's not Deadpool, he's still Deadpool. That's just my that's just my thoughts. If you've never seen Deadpool, go out and watch it. If you haven't seen it, then you're just weird. But it's a very dope, dope flick. It's not even a Marvel movie. It's a Sony? Um Fox. Fox, Sony, Marvel. Yeah, Fox. I don't know. Number two though is getting re released this year, isn't it? As a PG thirteen film at Christmas. Yeah, because it wasn't all that. It wasn't all that. But if it sells well as PG. Mm. then, ooh, that might be able to get you into Marvel's universe. True. And that's when they can start, you know, crossing motherfuckers over. But that's my number five, Deadpool. My number four, I want to say it's probably the first Marvel movie. The, far, the first Marvel movie. And it actually started it for all the rest of these Marvel movies to be made. My boy Wesley Snipes. Blade. Think about it. Oh yeah, Blade is Marvel. Oh yeah, shit, yeah. Yo, Blade started off. Alright, I'm not gonna keep going about the whole trilogy. I just know Blade Blade, what's that word? Damn it, Frost! I am talking to you. Damn, damn it, Frost. Like that's a bar right there Steven for life. Yo, like, shout out Gamma, me and Gamma Damn it, Frost. Damn it, Gamma. I'm yeah, talking. that movie right there was dope. Um that basically started the whole the whole to start for these people to think like, yo, we can actually make movies off of these comic books. Okay, he made it cool. Though. He made it, yeah, he made it cool to like cool. comic books and to like really get into it and all that. You know, who who don't like a black dude who, vampire, but who can chill out day and all night, you know? Martial arts and so and, and his homeboy Whistler, can't fuck with him. But, um, yeah, that was dope. That was, yeah. I think that was before, um, yeah, that was the first. Period. I mean, technically, like, like, your number one pick might have been first. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm real old MC, school, me. MCU, MC Marvel Studios. Yeah. Marvel, Marvel Studio yeah, wise, Devil, yeah. Hulk, Hulk's officially number one, I think, in <gasps> MCU. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Which one? The Bruce Banner one? The, um, the, the, the Dave Bruce Banner one? Or the Dave Banner? No. Or no one? Because there was a couple of them. What was Hulk was Eric Banner? Yeah. Eric Banner. Yeah. Eric Norton was better. Universe, I didn't like the other one. Like, I was just jumping across the world and shit. And, like three jumps. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's my number four pick, Blade. Number three, I'm picking the Dark Knight, Batman. Now, 
I had to ask, I had to ask the guys like which one was which because I know they're all dope, but I just don't know the name. Dark Knight. Dark Knight. What's, the, what's the first one? Begins. Yeah, Batman, Batman Begins. Begins. Batman Dark Begins. Knight Dark Knight and then Dark Knight Rises. Okay, they're all dope, but I think the one with the Joker in it, Heath Ledger, because you know Heath was uh, uh, outstanding actor in that one. I think it's probably his best role ever. Possibly. Yeah, possibly, possibly his best, best role performance. ever. Best performance ever. Considering when he got cast, he was just coming off a rom-com. Yeah, he used to do a lot of rom-coms ten, back then. Ten things I hate about you, maybe? No, that's old school. That, that's old school. I, that's the movie. That's that's he's coming off one of those types of... You know, but he's a rom-com kind yeah. of guy. You know, and to, for him to do that and to... He's take like, that role and he's a thespian right? he's like a proper actor oh yeah he's, he's like a theater actor role. yeah yeah he's, like, he's yeah, dope big to him. he did a real good job and you know he passed away making that movie too so you know r.i.p um yeah but that's a dope one that's i think that's i think that's probably one of the best ones out of all three of them that's probably one of the best that's my my opinion anyway um the dark knight you know my number my number three pick. Number two will have to be X-Men. The first one. The very first one. Um, it was, for me, I, I went to the cinema to go see it. And I thought it was amazing to see all the characters from the comic books and from the cartoons to be on the screen. And like back then, they actually made it a purpose to put all the characters in the movie. Just, you know, you see Rogue and... Rogue didn't even have a suit on, but she was, she was still touching motherfucker, you know? She still put your ass under. That saber two Storm, Cyclops. Is that the subway scene or the bank scene with Toad? Uh, yeah, 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 one, one, Toad was in the first one and Nightcrawler was in the second one. But I was a big fan of Toad, even when he came with the video game was X2. for the movie. X2 was dope too. Hard, mate, widely yeah. regarded as one of the best as well. Yeah. So I was slightly like, I was wondering why you had one in there ahead of it, but obviously but, seeing yeah. the cinema originally, yeah, the first originally. one setting up the scene. Yeah, that was really dope for me, and um, yeah, and and I seen um Professor X, and I'm like, yo, that's a dude from Star Trek, you know. <laughs> so that was that was like really cool. Considering how, how much of a fan like the animated series. Oh yeah, to, to yeah. Like that's what I'm saying. It took you straight from the from the comic book from the cartoon to the movie like that one, but like now you got like all the new ones which are from the comic books, but like that's from like the actual cartoon that we used to watch back in the day. So, I know you're a big fan, just let me ask you bro. X-Men 1, mm. when you realised there was no Chip, Jubilee, or Sentinels, feelings? Happy, annoyed, or just happy that... I was, happy, I was happy that the film was there, that it was actually a film. So when I go to school, you know, on Monday, the kids was like, yo, you know, we was always that talking about it and shit like that. There's going to be like, a, they're going to come see you all later anyway in the second Yeah, you never know. Like, if they, well, if we, we, did, we, did, we but back then we didn't even know if they were going to green light a second one and all that. We didn't even know about green lights for movies. Like, I was, that's where I was like 10. We had to wait until the end credit of Days of And we didn't even know. We didn't even know about end credits. Scene. Fam, we didn't yeah, even like, know about end credits back then. All the teams together, you're like, this we didn't know it should have been. Do you remember the um, end credit for the first X-Men? Nobody does. That's the whole point. Cause we don't remember that there was end credits back then. That's the whole point. It's the first. God damn it. Well, MCU did it in it. Like once Marvel got their own studios, they started popping end credits on to so they could thread their universe together. That was the reason they had yeah. an end credit to let people know. Come back for more films. We've got more yeah. coming. See that smart motherfucker. He knows shit like that. I, you know, it's my boy. But um, yeah, man. The first one was dope. The first one was very dope. Which I always thought like, like, I like, I don't know if you guys seen my other video about the comic book villains, Magneto. And then this one that Wolverine, like he was like, all right, Magneto was the villain of this one. And Wolverine was like the big character. And I always, and I always thought like, Magneto can just really kill him. Just pull his skeleton out at one time. Just like, come here, get over here. And just leave his skin just there, just, just there. But I was thinking like, nah, that's some, that's some rated R shit. That's some Logan shit right there. But um, yeah, that's my number two choice, X-Men 1. As a point of reference, bro, this is probably the first 
initial phase where British actors started taking over. Oh yeah. The roles. Oh yeah. If you had you Ian used McKellen and used Patrick to think, Stewart. Yeah, you used to think that um, Patrick Stewart's British. <laughs> I'm like, like I didn't hear that. Anyway, but no, real that's 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 a real that's a real big thing right there because usually when well, when I was growing up, British characters were always the villains. You guys are really right. diabolical yeah. in that way. Yeah. The accent alone. Kilgrave. Yeah. That was creepy that man. That's still that's still the creepiest. Like he's a helpful guy, Doctor Who, but he's like <laughs> raping bitches and shit like that on the low. I don't know, I'm not getting to that. Go watch Jessica Jones. We got a video on that too. But um, yeah, that's my number two, X Men One. Um, my number one. This was the very first. I didn't even know what Marvel was. Then, this was just a movie I watched when I was a young kid. Jumping around. I don't know who had the tape. I don't know where I found the tape, but I had the tape. The official tape. The Punisher, the 1989 edition with motherfucking Dolph Lundgren. Now, you think about it. You guys don't even know about that. That's why I respect Dolph from back then because he did it. And I didn't know anything about The Punisher. That's probably my first superhero that I actually heard about and seen a movie. So it made me want to get into it. And then you actually got into like his whole story and you realize this guy is not a superhero. He's... He's a Charles Bronson, you know, he's a death wish kind of person, you know, he's just, his family, his family's gone. So guess what? Everybody got to go. And they even remade it recently on Netflix though. But the Punisher, the 1989 edition, that shit was so goddamn dope. From a young child watching that kind of shit, it was MDK, literally MDK. Rolling with that big gun that Tony Montana had at the end of Scarface. He had that through the whole movie. All right, he just blow motherfuckers up just because it's Tuesday, and he's looking for children who's been kidnapped. You know, the shit was so gangster, man. But um, yeah, if you haven't seen it, I advise you go check it out. And if you the kind of people who go on like those little sites to see like if the movie's good enough and shit like that before you watch it, fuck that. Just go and watch it, cause these people don't know shit. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> that's my top ten comic book films.